as a left arm. And what's quite surprising is just how light these bones are. This is the skull after it's been pieced back together. And as you can see around the eye sockets, they're completely out of alignment. Um, the skeleton itself is laid out into a very shallow scoop in the ground. Down at her feet, resting almost uh, against her shin, was the, the iron mirror with its associated brooch and hundreds of very small blue glass beads. The excavation at, at Wet Wang Village really provided us with some very key insights into the Iron Age. From my perspective, the opportunity to really understand Iron Age vehicles, to get the sort of evidence that allowed us to go into reliable reconstruction and then develop a whole lot more questions about how did these work, what did they look like, how well were they able to work in wood, in metal, very, very important. We also have the idea that we have an iconic woman buried with a vehicle, with her mirror. She herself was a very distinguished person, obviously from the burial rite, but also the fact that she appears to have been very old for the population, comparatively with the population. We think she's at least 35 years old, probably early, early 40s. Unfortunately, most of the women were dying around about the age of 25, so, some a lot younger than that. So she's very old, she's also very tall. Perhaps one of the longest lasting things which show power is a very small but nonetheless significant thing. On the terrets, show them here decorated, we've used red enamel, we've cheated. Uh, there were, one of them was replaced with red enamel, but most of this was actually red coral. Now the red coral has probably come from the Red Sea, that's about the closest. There are a few isolated Eastern Mediterranean coral uh, deposits. But it's, it's significant, I think, that here we are seeing in Yorkshire material that's been brought in a very long way, clearly reflecting status, clearly showing you that although the cart chariot burials are a feature of East Yorkshire, actually what they represent is, if you like, at least a a European connection. We certainly know that the British evidence seems to be pulling together similar wheel dimensions, for example, similar ways of manufacture. But actually, I think that really that's just symptomatic of trade and travel and transport across a much, much wider remit than one tends to think about when you're talking prehistory. Mm -hmm.